Hey everybody, it is Tam Telling Tales and I am back with a new episode of Book Banter. You guys, I get to do some of the most fun and intriguing interviews and today we get to talk to Cassandra Charles. Y'all want to hear more about her? Hold tight. I got it. Tam Telling Tales. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Tam telling tales. I got it. Tongue twister. Say it real fast one time. Ladies and gentlemen, today we welcome the talented Cassandra, a Brooklyn native with Trinidadian roots, a graduate of Morris Brown College with a BA in Mass Media Arts and a Master's in Adult Education. She's published over 15 books, including The Lust and Lies and The Young Jamie series, along with several standalone novels such as Joyride and novelty items. Cassandra is an avid reader and traveler, steadily checking off her extensive bucket list. She lives by the motto, live, laugh, love embodying her zest for life. Join us as we explore her creative journey and passion for storytelling. Welcome, Miss Cassandra Charles. Hello, thank you so much. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? That was so good. I was like, oh, that's me. You listen, when you have authors in the building, you know, you got to make sure you come correct with those types of things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So shout out to our producers who are also authors. Yes. Okay? Yes. Or author, I should say. So, gotcha. now I know that you have watched the show before. Of course. And... We start off all of the shows the same way. You can count on me to give you a game of preferences. Ready. Okay. So you ready? Ready. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> now, some of my questions are usually like slated for Detroit folks. Okay. Let's see. We got, we got New York in the building. So we got to, you know, switch things up a little bit. Ready. Okay. <clears throat> Let me take a drink. <laughs> nervous. <laughs> <laughs> don't be nervous. Don't be. Don't be. Mm-hmm iPhone or Android? iPhone. A laptop or a desktop computer? Laptop. A drop top or SUV? Ooh, drop top. Mm-hmm. BMW or Mercedes? BMW. Beach house or cabin? Really? Yeah. I don't know why I took you for a cabin girl. No, ma'am. Mm, okay. I don't okay. like outdoorsy and bugs. Really? Uh -uh. Okay. I get it. I don't either. So, mm -hmm. um, would you rather watch a sitcom or a crime drama? Oh, I'm gonna go with a crime drama. I like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. On the low. <laughs> okay. Eddie Murphy or Richard Pryor? Mm -mm, no, go not going there. Mm -mm. Wait, what? Not going there. So you know what you got to do, right? <sighs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> I know what you. Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me explain why. Mm -hmm. my, def my defense. Let me hear this. So Richard is like, it's he's he paved the way for Eddie. So I feel like you can't come. They're two different, two different like divisions. Mm -hmm. So Richard Pryor is the, it's classic. Eddie Murphy is like classic for the '90s. Richard Pryor is classic for like, different time zones kind of thing. That's fair. For time, I guess era, eras. There we go. But that's fair. Okay. So then let me ask you this uh -oh. one. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Steve Harvey Ooh. or Bernie Mac? Bernie Mac. Okay. That one I can do. Yeah, that, that one was, okay. Yeah, that was a comparable <laughs> one. Okay. Um, Aretha Franklin or Patti LaBelle? I worked with Patti LaBelle a couple of years ago. I mean, decades ago. So it's got to be. I love Miss Patti. She's amazing. Like, oh I love goodness. Miss Patty. You know what? And I opened for Aretha Franklin. Really? Girl, yes. I love Miss Patty. We both have a sort of little stories for yes. our for yes. our great. She hugged me. Oh, my goodness. Every time. She man. probably smelled good, too, didn't she? She's so nice. She's <sighs> super nice. Like, yeah. So, Miss Patty all day. Okay. Okay. Love I her. understand. I understand. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go now. Ready. Jay-Z or Nas? Oh, I think I didn't drink. It's okay. <laughs> fine. I'll go with you. Mm-hmm. That was, really hard for that was a hard one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Hmm. Uh oh. Let's see. This might not be too bad. Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock? <sighs> Going back to the comedy. Um, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Okay. Yeah. I'm with it. Um, dark liquor or light liquor? Light. Oh, okay. Is Would it? you rather skinny dip or wear a bathing suit? <laughs> it depends where I'm at. I don't have a problem skinny dipping. But, um, I mean, most places I'll rock with the bathing suit. But I, I've done topless a couple of times. Okay, then. Ooh, okay, I'll say that. See, of course, we're going to have to ask some little, you know. Of course, of course. Questions because, baby, Joy Ride. Okay. What? Okay, if you know anything about After Dark for the Tale, you know that she has sponsored an episode. So, <clears throat> yes. we were not going to avoid these questions. Of course. Okay. Um, let's see. Ready? Let me ask this one. <sighs> when you with your boo, mm -hmm. and you had to choose one or the other. Oh boy. Would you rather do it in the kitchen or in the bedroom? I am super square. I am a bedroom girl. You guys want a bedroom? I am a bedroom girl. Why? Okay. Because I'm also a germaphobe. So <laughs> you said Makes the kitchen. Sense. We eat in the kitchen. I cook in the kitchen. I, I have mean, to Lysol everything. Like right. I'm, a, I'm a germaphobe. You, you said like right. another you place. You eat in the kitchen. You said like a car or like a bath, even the bathroom. Like I'd be like, mm. you said the kitchen. I, I eat, eat in, in the there. kitchen. Yeah. I would have to Lysol exactly. everything and wipe it down. And now I'm questioning eating in your kitchen. I mean, okay. <laughs> Listen, I like to eat out anyway. <laughs> 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 Last time we met, you were a virgin, so we have to come back to that one. I'm not too sure if that's still a thing. We're going to come back to that one. Because what happened was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This ain't about me. Okay. All right, let's go. Uh, let me see. Um, ready? A melted candle or an ice cube? Ice cube. Okay. Okay. Now, would you prefer that your man wear a button-down shirt or a polo? Ooh. As long as it fits, though. Like, uh, I mean, a button-down. I, I like a, I like a nice fitted. Not, like, tight-fitted like these kids be wearing. I like something to a tailored fit. So, I'm going to go with the, yeah. I'm gonna go with the button Like, down. he can still move around. And, yeah. like, he needs to pick but it what fit him. It just fit without him. Like You see a little something, something. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I be wondering, how do they even like get the shirts to fit on their arms the way that they do? Do they? You think they be um getting their shirts tailored? Oh, they probably get their shirts tailored. tailored. Okay. Or like now they be making like brands now. Be they they hip to the game. They know what we us women like, so they be like making it smaller and mm. shorter and those things so they can fit fit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Do you like a good guy or a bad guy? I'm a square, so I'm a good guy. I like a good guy. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Steak or lobster? Um, so I'm pescatarian, so I'm going to go with lobster. I don't eat meat. Um, I only eat seafood. Okay, then. Yeah, pescatarian. All right. <laughs> Sweet tea or lemonade? Ooh. Chick-fil-A lemonade? Yes. Okay, it's got to specifically be Chick-fil-A. Nobody else's it's lemonade? Like my grandma make a mean lemonade though. I'm gonna have to try Granny's lemonade. Yeah. But right now it's just Chick Fil A lemonade. Sweet tea, I'm weird because I would add some water because sweet tea in this. I live in Atlanta. Sweet tea in the South it just don't make no sense. It's super sweet. It's amazing though down mm -mm. in the South. When I live down South, baby, no, I used to go to I'm the, gonna need uh, some water because <laughs> like the the fast food places would sell like sweet tea by the gallon. Yes, I'm just like. I'm going to need half sweet tea and half water, please. Can I get a burger, fry, and a gallon of sweet tea? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's exactly how they do it. Yes. yes. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Mm. Let's see. Oh, okay. This is old school for you. Ready. I love old school. In the heat of the night mm -hmm. or Little House on the Prairie? Oh, in the heat of the night. Who yes. watched Little House on the Prairie? Now, people was watching Little House on the Prairie. I watched Well, but Michael Landon, I love me some Michael Landon now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Little House on the Prairie and Highway to Heaven. Did you watch <laughs> you Highway to Heaven? all the way back. I watched episodes, but I wasn't you, into it like you that. You into no. it like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you talking okay. about ages now. Listen, I don't Listen. know what she talking about. I've never seen a show in my life. 
Well, you know, we live in a day and age <laughs> of, you know, rerun. Oh, of good all point. Yep. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you can watch these things now. Yeah. It doesn't mean okay. that you're old. I, I agree. I'm with you. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, Little House on Prairie. Prairie. I can't get down with that. It's no way I would turn it Sorry, sis. Oh. Okay, well, um, in the heat of the night, it is. Yes. All right, Cassandra, since you know. Okay. All right, fine. Mm hmm. Um, do you prefer writing books or reading books? I'm at the drink on that. Can I be even? Can it be even? Or that no, like a no, you got to pay. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. When you are either reading okay. or writing, which genre would you prefer? Either um, erotica mm-hmm. or straight fiction. I'm gonna have to lean with. Oh man, this is a good one. Um, can I say no? I'm gonna go with erotica. I'm gonna go with erotica. I was gonna say you know that was know. supposed to be easy. Only because like you know my style of, of erotica is is different than what I've been reading. Like just because there's a sex scene in a book, people like just say it's erotica and it's not quite for me so it's like i need it to be if it's going to be erotica i need it to be all the way erotica and a lot of these books are just regular love stories with sex scenes in me so that's why i'm like "Mm." okay i'm glad you brought that up because that is something that i want to talk about with you how you are going to define what's erotica and what is you know a romance okay so Hold tight on that conversation. Yes. We are almost done with preferences because we just got this one last question. <laughs> I got to ask you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Tell them telling tales mm-hmm. or any other platform. Um, Tam telling tales. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Say what? <laughs> Give me my card. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you guys. I walked in. I was like, oh, my God. This place is dope. <laughs> so excited. Yes, of course, you might be. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, you guys, we have come to the conclusion of preferences, but that is not all that you get to hear from our guest on today. You guys, we are about to start talking a little bit about her as well as some of her favorite things when it comes to being an author and being a reader. So, here we go. Ready. Now... Of course, we know that you are an author and you are writing some amazing books and writing um, the instruction cards on some (laughs) very interesting games. Mm -hmm. But um, tell us a little bit about just you outside of being an author. So I'm an avid reader. I read all the time. I was the girl in college that would just sit under a tree in Atlanta and just read a book. Like everywhere I went, I would read a book. I'm the girl that you see at the bar by herself reading a book. Like I just love reading a book. And back then when I was in college, um, and, and and this is my interpretation of the books I've read, they were always just one book. Always, in my opinion, always the great books are just always one for whatever reason. And I used to always tell my friends like, one of these days if I'm gonna write a book, I'm gonna write a series. Series are popular now, but to me back then, it, a lot of people weren't really doing series. I said, I'm going to write a series. And I kept saying, I kept saying, a lot of my friends like, you should just do it, you should do it. So my first book took 10 years to do because I, I started writing it and I put it down, life happens, got married, like, you know, life happens. Mm-hmm. Then I kept picking it back up. And then, um, yeah, so I finally just buckled down and wrote my first book, which I thought was like a really good book without any discipline to it, no outline. It was just like I wrote a book. So my writing, and I, I think other authors would agree to this, my writing from my first book to where I'm at now, completely different. Because mm. now I've just, I write with like more of my readers in mind of like, and, and me as a reader, like I want more of like a climax here or I want more of like a, of like, you know, something like a build up, or I want something that's going to draw me in. Like my first book, which is still, a, I'm very proud of it, but it kind of like dragged out a little bit. And then it, towards the end, people was like, it took a while to get good. And I'm like, no, I get it because I was building a storyline. So mm-hmm. I've learned over time with no real training of like now putting myself in as a reader's perspective, like what would a reader like and how would I like to do it? But I love writing. I love reading. Um, I think I was kind of torn on which one to answer because I would read 60, 70 books a year where I Ooh. may only write one or two. So it's like, my process of writing is slightly different because I will stop and just be like, I'm just going to read a book. Like I'm reading a series now, a three book series. And 
it's a, the book one was amazing and book two i was like yeah she should have stopped at book one <laughs> no but that's not even like a bad comment it's like i think sometimes people just force it into like a series or mm -hmm. force the book and again i'm guilty of that my own series i was guilty of that and um I, I'm a fictional writer. I started fiction that was like urban love story, you know, every things that happen ever after. And my original series was six book series. And um, by the time I got to like book three or four, people was like, you're writing erotica. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, no, it's it's urban romance. Of course, it's a sex scene. And everyone just kept saying, but your sex scenes are so detailed and very mm -hmm. erotica. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got to book five, people was like, listen, sis, this book is, there was a sex dungeon. There was like all this foolishness in there. Yeah, people was like, this is erotica. This is erotica. Mm -hmm. So once I finished the series, I finally was like, let me try this erotica thing. And of course, it's my number one seller, Joyride. And it's been the whole product line and all this other stuff. But oh, yeah. I enjoy it. Of course, I have a full time job, so it's not my full time job. I was going to ask yeah. that. Yeah, oh. I have a full time job. I, I really, it's funny. I think, like I said, I, I live, I'm a square. I'm a very like square person. I'm not super adventurous. Writing or the erotica side of writing is like my alter ego, is what I tell people. Um, I work at a nonprofit, I work with um, individuals who have a barrier to employment. So it could be like criminal history or low education. So like my like everyday life is very much like a philanthropist. Like I help, like I'm really excited mm -hmm. to help. And then I just have like this alter ego side of me that just loves to like read a life that I don't live and also write a life that I don't live. And yeah. it's so natural to me. Is it from people I work with? I don't know, but I just have this, the, my mind just flows with like foolishness and it just makes it good on paper. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, we're glad that it does. <laughs> you know, we get to reap the benefit of yes, it all. of the foolishness, yes. Yeah. And you know what? It's funny that you say that because I think that that's what it's like for most people who are readers or even mm -hmm. authors. You know, if you're a writer in, in any component of it, you get to kind of escape yeah. from your real world. You yeah. either are writing your real world or you are writing like the complete total opposite Correct. of it. Yeah. It's like one or yeah. the other. But I've met a lot of people, a lot of authors that that don't read. I don't quite understand that because I'm like, I think you, it's almost like, it's like being a, a famous director and never watch a movie. So it's almost weird to me when I meet people who was like, how do you have time to read so many books? And I'm like, but well, my passion is reading and write. Like it's a passion of mine. So mm -hmm. it's not about time, it's a passion. But it, it's a lot of authors that don't read. <laughs> they will say like, they don't want another person's book to interpret it, you know they don't they want to their like cloud their mind or they don't want to put use someone else's work and i'm like it's i never see it that way like i mm -hmm. it's not even like i don't even like sometimes i'm like all right i'm gonna have a writer's block and i read another person's book not to inspire me but just to kind of like get me into a happy space of like oh that was a great storyline and sometimes i may pull out like i like how the ending was like a cliffhanger or i like how the ending just was you know this something. So it may inspire me, not the storyline, but just like the version of how they did something may inspire me. They may have done a flashback scene. I'm like, oh, that's a cool idea. That's a good idea to put a flashback scene. So it helps me a little bit and kind of keeps me creative when I read other people's work. But, and sometimes, and I give credit all the time. Like I'm like, I read a, this guy named Noah's work and um, my book, Joyride, it ends. And I told Noah, I'm like, I credit him to this day. My book ends in Joyride, just like how your book ends and thing where it just ended. I was always like this very cookie cutter writer where it's like, I needed an ending. It needed to be like mm -hmm. the end. And I just ended it. People was like, I like the ending, but I was like, I, I don't know, but, but it just ended. And some people hate it and some people love it, but it's like, there's no ending. It just ends. Like it's a mystery ending where it's mm. like, use your own. And he told me that I slid in. I'm quick to slide into someone's DM. Like, let me tell you what I just read. And he was like, no, use your imagination. I was like, Ooh, I like that. So, so sometimes other, another person's book kind of inspires me in my writing style. See, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would really think that people who write would read too. Mm. You'd be surprised. Or at least go through like bouts of time where they're like, okay, I'm writing right now, so I know I can't read yeah. other things. But mm -hmm. to just be like, mm, nope, I'm not going to read anything. Now that I think about it, I remember listening to the radio, and there was a celebrity. Mm -hmm who was talking about their uh, memoir, mm -hmm. autobiography that was coming out and admitted that he hadn't read it. Oh. And I was just like, oh, well, <laughs> guess I won't be reading right? it if you yeah. didn't think enough of it mm -hmm. to read it. I know I'm not. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say no names. No, please But yeah. I do remember hearing that interview, and I was really shocked that he so comfortably said it. I know his you know? publicist was like, never say that again. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we're just cut. We're not even going to do no tours no more. <laughs> just uh, end this. Because, mm. yeah. I, and now that I think about it, I don't really recall that anybody was ever saying anything I don't, yeah. about his book all like that. So mm, it's, it, it was giving money grab. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was giving money grab. Oh. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But. I'm glad to know yeah. that you are somebody who is committed to the craft. Mm-hmm. And we can tell in all of the amazing work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to go back to this conversation about erotica because yes. <laughs> a little while ago, some years back, actually, mm-hmm. I did this video where I was defining mm. erotica okay. and romance. Okay. And I want to say I even came up like with a term, like call it eroticism or, or what, erotic. Child, I don't even remember. A combination I was just of the two, stuff, okay. Right? And so I was giving all these descriptions mm-hmm. on what makes the book erotic, what yeah. makes the book romance. And it was really in fun, right? Mm-hmm. It was very lighthearted and comical. But I do want to ask you, how would you define, um, and actually I'm going to give three categories. Okay. Romance, erotica, and smut. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So in my opinion, romance will have a happily ever after. Two people get together. There's a a love story. There's a happily ever after. It's a good feeling book that you'll be excited about. I think erotica is very a fantasy of sex where it can be a sex club, a sex dungeon, something of a fantasy of someone would be like, I've never thought of having sex there. And it's like a fantasy world for someone. And then smuts to me would be just raw sex. It may not even have like an actual storyline. It would just be like people just having sex all the time. That would be my perception of it. But um, because again, I was some people all the time, sex is easy to get. Everyone can get sex, big, small, short, tall, ugly, cute. Everyone can have sex no matter what. Mm -hmm. But so if you're just wanting to get a book full of sex, I don't think that would be erotica because I think I'll be like more smut where erotica will have like a fantasy aspect to it, whether someone have a really big dick or someone is very pretty or someone is shy or someone's a virgin. There's some kind of fantasy aspect behind the storyline. So like in all of my books, I've written two erotic, technically three erotica books. In my erotica book, there is two of them have a sex club. So um, I know you're going to ask me a lot of questions, but the first one, it was kind of on a theory base where I just did a lot of Googling and I just kind of think. The last one I did, which was Code Red, I actually went to a play party. I actually spoke to people who are in the lifestyle. <laughs> we have a hand raise over there. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> That's what I said. The studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> the studio audience be studio auditing. Okay? That's yes. all I'm going to say. I'm sure that there are so many questions yes. that are already brewing in this room of very few people. Right? I've learned but a lot in so the last questions. life. I learned so much, but I'm very, again, it's a fantasy, not necessarily to me, but the alter ego of me is very fantasy. Like, and I went to a play party and they're so, and I say that like they're, they're foreign people, like the aliens, but they were so nice and welcoming to my questions because I'm, I go in there very ignorant. What is this? Oh, what is this used for? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's what it's for. So I go in very like kind of, well, they call me vanilla because vanilla is me. I'm not used to that lifestyle. So I'm very vanilla. There was a whole like in in Code Red, which is funny. I put a whole dictionary of words, like a a glossary of words because it's all these new words I've never heard of before. I've done two sex expos. I've attended two sex expos as an author at at a table. Here's a funny story now. Again, I'm very square, so I, don't, I I know enough, but like I also have like a a very like naive in my naive mindset of certain things. So I'm filling out the application. <laughs> so embarrassing. Mm-hmm. I'm filling out the application, and I see <laughs> I see there's check boxes of which section do you want to be in, and um, I write erotica, and my my cards are for couples. So I see a couples section. I'm like, oh, couples, that's me. So I check the couples box, submit the application, I get approved and I get in couples and I walk into it and I'm like, I'm in the couples section. They're like, oh, the swingers section to the back. I was like, 
oh, 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 oh. couples. Like <laughs> so, them type of couples. couples. So I was mm-hmm. in the mix of the of the swingers section. They were so nice to me. I've learned I so much. I know, right? <laughs> but I've also was super firm of like, I'm not in the life because they would ask you, are you in the lifestyle? That, mm-hmm. Like I've learned all these words. I'm like, no, I'm not in the lifestyle. Upside down pineapple is their signature, like that's a signature symbol. It's an upside down pineapple. So oh. if you see a house with upside down upside down pineapple, if you see earrings with upside down pineapple, a chugging, or like a pocket, they'll have like a little like a like a logo on your shirt, upside uh-huh. down pineapple. It's a signature to let you know that you're a swinger and you'll be open to the lifestyle. So oh. be careful when you put your pineapple in your basket. Because they will go around and put up upside down pineapple in the basket, walk around. And see who kind of—it's like a calling call. It's like a call. Yeah, would well, teach me something. Right, listen, I learned so much. I was just like so, and I so I was right now, and and Casey D, who is now a feature, she's a feature in my book. Um, a very amazing person, just really really nice personality, and she. So be careful calling yourself a hot wife. So she says she was a hot wife, and I'm like, okay, that's great. And she's 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 pretty. You know, she had on some provocative clothing. So I'm like. She's a wife, so she's hot. No, that's not what a hot wife is. Wait. No. Okay. No. Don't well, call yourself a hot wife ever. What's a hot <laughs> Wait a minute. I need to. What's happening here? You need to be cold red and go to the back of the book because it has said, a glossary. She said, I'm not about to tell you. She said, no, about no, the book. I'll tell you I what love, a hot wife is. A right hot there. wife is. You guys tell us. No, no, no. Y'all don't want to know because y'all don't want to call yourself a hot wife anymore. Okay. A hot okay. wife is. A wife whose husband allows his wife to sleep with other men. So that is a hot wife. Uh, a stag who would be the husband of the hot wife allows her to sleep with other men and he would entertain it. He will encourage her. Do he watch? He, he would watch. So, and oh. a stag will be considered. So, it, it, so this part was fascinating. Like I was sitting here like, like I, my mouth was dropped because I just never heard of it. So, and I wrote this in the book. Here's here's an analogy that I came up with. Um, so you have a football player or an NBA player, and they win a, a ring, win a championship ring, they win a Heisman Trophy, whatever it is. And the guys will come over and they were like, I want to take a picture with it. So a hot wife is a trophy wife. And the guys are coming over and saying, she's beautiful. I want to sleep with her. So it's like taking a, it's like that moment of like, this is this is what I have. Do you see her? So the guy, the stag, will present the wife. He will help her get dressed. He will show her off to the other guys. Turn around, honey. Look what you got. This is this is my wife. I'm proud of her. It's like a trophy. Mm-hmm. And then he will allow her to sleep with other men. As and then he will be like, "How was it? I told you she was good." Like it's almost like it's such a fascinating world that this 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 industry. So yes, yeah, so there's a stag and vixen. Also a hot wife. That's like the terms they go by. Ooh, so child. Don't you call know, yourself a hot wife anymore. No, nope, so I, I won't. Learned, she, she was so proud of it. And she's a, she's a great friend now. Like, you know, person I talk to when, I, when I'm writing my books. And I'm like, I'm going to never call myself a hot wife again. Like, mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-mm, not at all. Yeah. You know what? Um, well, thank you for that lesson. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. you're welcome. And I think that we should probably just hop right into uh, the conversation. <laughs> okay. of what book was that that she was talking about? And yes, 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 yes. So, you guys, Code Red. Mm-hmm. This is what you are looking for. Yes. Okay, this book right here. So, this book came out when? It actually came out on April 1st of this year. So, it just came out two months ago. Okay, yeah. so it's out now. Mm-hmm. And they can get a paperback. They can also get... It's on Amazon. It's also on my website, authorcassandracharles.com. But it's also on Amazon and my... Pay- and, my um, and I actually will be... I'm always doing a couple of book events all around city and all around the U.S., I guess, at travel. My mm-hmm. books are in a couple of bookstores, all that fun stuff. Okay, you guys. Yeah. So, make sure that you guys look for this. Go on to the back and look for this uh this glossary. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me look and see. Yeah, go ahead and get lure, 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 so, uh, Let me see. You ever I'm heard about of a, me something? You ever heard of a takeover? Don't go anyplace that has a takeover, okay. sis. <laughs> let me see. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can find a word that I'm not familiar All right, with. All right, let's see um, what you got. Um, see, um, a soft swap. Oh no, I don't know you what don't that do is. This I know what this one is, gang bang. I know that. <laughs> one. <laughs> I mean, no, no, I don't know. No, though, yeah, but I know what it is. Y'all know what? I'm <laughs> listen, I'm not playing this game with y'all. Oh, good, good so a soft swap and a hard swap. A soft swap might be you're swapping partners, but soft might be just oral. Or a hard swap will be vaginal. Will actually be intercourse. 
Uh, yeah. Welcome to the world. Code Red. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That has a lot of Cold research Red. in it. I was like, it, and, and, it, and I say this. So, okay. so I stay, I went to a couple, I went to two play parties. I stayed long enough until the play happened. Then I left. So oh, okay. I, I only went to like the early stages of the play and then I left. I See, like, that's what Denzel Washington always tell people to do. Uh-huh. Leave that half hour early. <laughs> it was more than half an hour, but yeah. Listen, Listen good good job. it was from like 10 to 3 a.m. I was like, oh no, I ain't gonna make it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I stayed till like 11 31. I was like, oh, okay, let it's time for me to pack up and leave. But they were super <laughs> nice. Everyone talked to me and they was like, write me in your book. Here's the story. I was like, <laughs> All right, what you got for me? Let me get these names down. But yeah. Oh, that's fun. dope. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah. That's dope. Well, you guys, <clears throat> we've had an opportunity to talk about book number one, but we still got a few more things that we want to talk about mm -hmm. with this amazing author, right? Okay. So you see this other book that we have here. Yes. Right? This one is called Joyride. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell everybody about that one? Joyride. So I have a six book series called The Jamie Reynolds Chronicles. And after this, the six books was done, I was bored. And I was like, what am I going to do? I came out with another book called, um, that one's a romance, urban romance, because there's a happy ever after. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called Thank You Next. And then I was like, what am I going to do afterwards? So what I started doing is I started pulling out single characters from the six book series and giving them their own book. So my series, The Jamie Reynolds Chronicles, or my books, The Jamie Reynolds Chronicles, is like Kevin Bacon. It's like the six degree separation. So all of them are based around Jamie Reynolds, who is like the sole character of all the books. So all the books have some kind of interaction with Jamie. And um, in Joyride, initially the focus was in the six book series, Jamie actually attended a sex club very briefly. And the sex club called was Jeep was called Venus or V. So very briefly, a chapter or two. And then um, I was kind of like, all right, let me try to do this whole erotica thing. So Robert, who was in the series, he goes out and meets Joy, who is was a stripper at Magic City, and they come together because they used to go to Venus. Venus in Atlanta actually closed down and never opened back up again, but it does. So the club is called Joyride because they perch. And for those who are in Atlanta, y'all know Venus. Don't ask. Y'all know Venus. <laughs> so Venus closed down like 10, 20, 10, 15 years ago. So they purchased Venus and they made Venus into a sex club for the African American elites of Atlanta. And that's mm. really the basis, like the basis storyline of the book where there's two levels, each room has a theme. And again, all of this at the time was pure research. All of everything in Georgia was pure research, just Google, Google and just kind of figuring out like I was tapping into all this stuff. And then it, it was very factual when I actually like went into the world of it. I was like, oh, well, shoot, good job, Cassandra. Like it was <laughs> actually, that's a good. Um, but yeah, so Joyride and um, they have this after hours swingers club. Um, for the elites, black in Atlanta, and um, they go around, they have fun, they have sex. It's very fantasy-like because there's multiple rooms. Um, there's the rooms upstairs, which is very just like you just have sex, and there's the rooms downstairs, which are more themed or more um, pleasurable. There's a bar, so it's like a club where you can go. And it wasn't until I went to the play parties after Joy Ride was thing, and this is gonna sound so. This is gonna sound weird, so bear with me. Okay, I'm but listening. couples came. To, so I actually the pleasure party I went to was um, was for blacks, black people, which I was surprised. I'm like, you number of white people up in here. No, it was actually for black people. Like it wasn't marketed that way, but it was 99 percent black people. There. I was shocked, okay. and 70 percent of them were couples. So here's my perception of it. It's like going to a Broadway show. Think about it. Like couples went to got all dressed up and came to this event because you pay a premium to come into this event. And you just stand around and you watch the entertainment. Now, there were three stations. One station, this lady, I don't remember the what it's called, but she was tying people up very, um, like there's a bondage technique that you tie people up. So she was tying people up and people felt so like, it was almost like they were having like an orgasmic moment when they got tied up and they were like, oh, oh. Like every time she pulled the tight, they were like, oh, oh. I'm just like, well, shit, what you feeling over there? Like, oh. <laughs> So, and then they just, they feel free and they just have like this. So a lot of people just stand around and watch, they sip it on the drink. Like it's almost like, like a watching like a show mm. and people just one or two people just get tied up and they would get hosted in the air and then they would just lay suspended in the air. Like and immersive that was, art. Yeah. Yeah. And like. people were just like 
fascinated by watching it. Then it was this other guy. He was kind of creepy because he had on like that mouse mask that, that you see all the time. Uh -uh, like that, that was kind of creepy. Never but he was shirtless. Face. He had like underwear, like boxes on. He just had a mouse mask. Do you have a nice body? Uh, for me, he was a little little petite. For me, he seemed a little young in my world, but I needed mm. someone seasoned, a okay. little extra something, a little, you know, a little okay. extra something. I like a little dad by myself, you know. I, that's what I'm saying. I need a little extra something. Yeah. Like, he was definitely yeah. in his early 20s. I was like, you too young for me, sir. Okay. But he had the mouse mask on, and he was just, like, whipping people. Like, they would, had a massage bed, and women would just come, take turns, and they would just get whipped. Like, he was just, like, sexually whipping them. And again, people would just stand around and watch it. And then um, there was, so the glory hole, which, you know, what goes down in the glory, do you know what the glory hole is? I know it's a glory okay. hole. Is. So a glory hole, I'm, we, I'm not we know square. what goes down in a glory hole. So there was another one where you can just stand around and watch the glory hole action. But I kind of looked at it from the outside of like, this is like going to like a show. So couples will come together, get dressed, have a drink in hand, and they would just watch different stations because again, people will, you know, rotate out. And it was like almost like a show. And then there was like casual music. Um, and, then, and then, yes, I left before the play happened. But I, I did, I was looking for the bathroom. I go a lot because I'm, I'm awkward like that. I was looking for the bathroom. <laughs> and I, they said it was down the hall. I did not know the 17 rooms that I was passing were playrooms. So I was like, oh, that's not the bathroom. Oh, that's oh. not the bathroom. So I did this like seven times as I was finding the bathroom. But yeah, so each room is very, there's a bed in each room. And then again, people were just, standing around watching people give head or I, I didn't see them do intercourse but i'm sure they had sex whatever I'm but people sure. were just kind of watching around and they you don't have to participate and you just watch and i do, i think it's so, so when I, I like the fantasy version of me i'm like I, I i know i wouldn't do it but i wouldn't mind doing that i wouldn't mind not participating but just going to an event you get all dressed up and you just sexually watch other people Kind of like have fun and just explore their sexuality, uh, and I thought that was kind of fascinating when I saw that. I was kind of like, I would, in my heart, I would do it, but in my mind, I wouldn't do it. But mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is something that's kind of cool. I would probably do something like that. I'm fascinated by yeah. hearing going in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's Joyride. So Joyride and, and so Joyride takes place in Atlanta, and Code Red takes place in Alabama. Believe it or not. Alabama. Super random. Super random. We're so, in Alabama. Now we'll park. Here. I didn't say. I didn't then, say. I didn't say. Okay, so if you had to pick a part of Alabama, <laughs> that was your motivation. The reason why I can't say is because I have a friend who is a mayor in Alabama and he is a, a mayor in the book. So I'm not going to put his city on blast because Ooh, I know who you're talking about. Because <laughs> I'm not going here with you. Because <laughs> I know who it is. Yeah, because see, I got people in Alabama. His city is where the sex club is at. I ain't going there with you. I ain't saying no names, no nothing. I bet I know. But <laughs> I so that so yeah, so I'm not but I do say it's about 45 minutes away from Atlanta. That's we gonna talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna talk offline because I feel like I know who you talking I'm not saying about. Nothing. We'll talk offline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Okay. So listen, yes. you know, aside from the great books that you are writing, you also are delving into yes. the the cards yes. the games yeah. and since we're going to be talking about your games i figured we might as well just take this time to play another i knew one. you was gonna say you okay I knew you. so <laughs> got? um i got another game i want to play okay. with you we did preferences and now it's time for us to do a little something oh lord that we have over here called uh <clears throat> drunk confidence <laughs> okay. Now you're not drunk. No, right? not yet. No, I got to drive, you so no. Are a confident woman, and Ready. so I'm sure that you are probably going to be willing to do. Oh lordy. Or know the answers to some of these here cards. That's a okay? lot of cards there. What you got? <laughs> not that many. It's just one <laughs> or three or six. You know. Okay. So I'm going to ask, and um, if you can. Then you will. Okay. And if you can't, then you'll drink. All right. Sound Ready. good? I'm ready to refill, but go ahead. Oh, okay. No, then. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I, I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh, okay. She <laughs> said she got a draft. So, okay. All right. Knows all of the words uh -oh. to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. 
I think I do, yeah. Go for it. In West Philadelphia, born and raised, we're a playground where I spend most of my days chilling out, maxing out, maxing out cool, and I'm shooting some b-ball outside high school, and a couple of guys, what's up to no good, started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight, my mom's got scared, so she moved oh, to your auntie, auntie Uncle Bel Air. I was supposed to cab, and when they came there, the, lic the, the license plate said fresh and dice in the mirror. But the only thing I could say to this cab was where I thought, now nah, forget it, your home is to Bel Air. I pulled up to the house around seven or eight and I yelled to the cabin, your host, saw you later. Looked at my kingdom. I was finally there. I sent my throne to Kurt Fisher Bellet. Okay, dude, I was there. <laughs> yeah, you okay. Okay. You okay. Ooh, one down, down, one down. <laughs> one down. Five to go. Okay. <laughs> Name three states and their state capitals. Oh Lord. Um, New York is Albany. New Jersey is Trenton, and Georgia is Atlanta. No, Georgia is no Georgia is um. Damn, it's because of the pick another state. Or no? Ah, you it's, cheat. Okay, okay, wait. Let me pick another one. Um, oh shoot, ten. California Nine. is. Eight. Ah, Seven. no wait, Georgia. I live in Georgia. It's not Savannah. No, it's not Savannah. Uh, Any Albany? Four. Three. Athens. No. Two. I got nothing. Well, uh -huh. Take a break. Wait, what is Georgia? I'm so sorry, Georgia. If I live in Georgia, I'm Take so sorry for Georgia. Take is it Atlanta? Is it Savannah? Take a break. I feel like it's Albany mm -hmm. or Athens. Is mm -hmm. it? Oh, Lord, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you gotta you gotta fact check me because I can't. I'm about to. We fact checking right now. I can't. I'm I feel like she got it wrong. I'm I know so sorry, Atlanta. Atlanta. It's I lived in I lived in Georgia for like you seven live? years. Savannah. Where I think you live? Savannah. Savannah. I live? I live in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Oh, okay. But I went to Morris Brown College. Oh, it, Atlanta is a kind of thing. That's a lot. Okay, so I did say Atlanta. You did say Atlanta. Ah! Atlanta okay. It says Atlanta, but okay. I okay. Think it well, was. yeah, we. Okay. Well, right. Sorry, right. Atlanta. My heart is that you. My, you like my second home. You got the right. Yeah, I feel like they did too. Cause when I, I live like here. Oh, I, I don't know if they but I lived in changes. Georgia like it's 20 years ago. The oldest city in Georgia is Savannah. It used to be Savannah. Because I'm like, know. I don't remember. I don't know. I'm, I'm but sorry, anyway, Georgia. okay, I'm that's fine. I'm gonna okay. go ahead. I'm gonna let you have that Thank one you. on crime. <laughs> go have that one. But I used to live in Georgia too. I was staying in um, McDonough. Okay, I, I stayed done. in McDonough. Then I stayed in like Jonesboro for okay. like a hot yeah, second. I was like, oh, I didn't know. I, I used to work at Greenbrier Mall. Come on in. Everyone used to roll through Greenbrier. I met DMX there. I met ja Rule there. Like everybody used to come through. As small and ghetto as that mall was, everybody rolled through that Listen, mall. It was, it, it was, was and it was the spot to be at. Yeah, because baby, you gonna go in there, you gonna find you a little something. Mm -hmm. That was like the southern Northland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, she don't know what no oh, she don't know what no Okay, <laughs> it's it's the Detroit. Um, gotcha. Yeah, 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 got it. I Detroit figured, version. I figured that part. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Oh, oh it yep, is. it's close. Um, next one. Can hum. A song oh, that's easily recognizable to the other players in this game, which is me. But I ain't playing. Oh my gosh. Gotta hum it. Okay, I got that there one. You go. Twinkle, twinkle, <laughs> little star. I, I got I, that I, one. I was like, it has to be a nursery rhyme. That's okay. There, go. <laughs> there we go. We got it. Okay. Next one. <clears throat> Dang, I got you singing a lot. I okay, see. I'm gonna put this one in the back. Okay, okay. you want to do that one? Um, can say I love you in three languages. Nope, cannot. Okay, well that's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can anyone? What about that? two? No, I can't do that. J'adore. That's French. Yeah. Who are I you? I love you. Is English. Good valid and point. A more? I know more is love, isn't it? Cha. Well, you have to take your drink. Yeah, I took my drink because I got okay. nothing. <laughs> this is going to be our last one. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, Lord. This one might tell a little bit of our age, too. Oh, Lord. Here you go. Oh, can name. Te amo. I didn't know Spanish. Te amo. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Heard that. okay. Well, she didn't know it, so. I didn't know it. I took a she drink. She had to take her yeah. drink. This is the last one. Mm hmm. Can name five fonts available in Microsoft Word. Okay, that's easy. Um, so Roman Times, um, Arial, um, Courier. Um, it begins with another C. Calab, 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 
something like that. Mm, um, did you say that? Actually, there's two couriers. There's courier italicized and regular courier. I think is it new? <laughs> right, the courier. Nice <laughs> lot of couriers. Um, Ariel, Roman Times. Who said that one? Um, ten. Oh, nine, eight, seven. <laughs> I feel like I don't know how I don't know this. I'm gonna swear I know this. I didn't take my drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. book man. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I work in nonprofit and workforce workforce development, so we only I only focus on two. It only supposed to be these two or three fonts, nothing else. But right, well, yeah. Boom. So you had to take your drink. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But you know, we're gonna stay in this you yeah. know area of games, right? Yes. And we're gonna talk about some of the the games that you have created as yes. spinoffs from your yeah. books. So yeah. <clears throat> the first one, and you've heard us talk about it, Joyride, mm-hmm. right? So tell us about these cards yeah. right here. So the character Joy, and so I finished the book, the character Joy in the book, um, towards the end, she, she gets um, introduced to do a line of erotica products. And she's a very like, she's a boss in this book and she's very like, um, sex positive, and in her her concept was to write to to create a line of sex toys that were more women friendly and help women kind of empower women. Mm-hmm. So she says in the book, my most prized possession is my sex position flashcards because they educate women. Men have porn. Women don't really. Women will watch porn not to learn. Men will watch porn and be like, I want to do that because they learn it. Women watch porn just to watch it. So her again, her as in me as the writer writes the concept of these flashcards to help educate women in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, it was like six months later after the book came out and I was like, okay, what am I going to write next? And I'm like, but Joy said she made flashcards. So I Googled, I did not see black and brown flashcards that look like us. So I created I right now. <laughs> flashcards for the culture. Um, there are 30 positions in all. And I did not make up these names. These are actual names of the position. Okay. Again, we all know doggy style. We know missionary. I'm on 69 right but now. But we know 69. But do you know Amazon? Do you know Face Off? Do you Ooh. know Aquaman's Delight? So <laughs> that <laughs> I just passed Aquaman. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> so it teaches you step by step how to do a certain position. And they're, you know, for any, they're for same sex or for, because they, they tell you if you can go ag- annually or vaginally. And I did a lot of research on these just to kind of kind of figure out what direction I wanted to go. I'm very proud of the card. My designer did a really good job mm-hmm, they and they did. print really well. And so we have the Joyride flashcards. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah we they should. made a game out of it and some of the yeah. clubs. So, so I've been to play parties and they would read off the instructions and then, and then couples had to like, do the positions and see who got the position correctly and stuff like that. So I yeah. see, so initially people, it's not, it wasn't a game originally. It was just like flashcards for the culture. And then people started making it into a game. I had three people reach out to me. It was like, I made it into a game. And I'm like, and since they come in a box, people was like, is it a game? And I'm like, no, it's not a game. And then I was like, well, shoot, it could be a game. So it I really made can. it into a game. So that's how we got my game, the Joyride yes. game. And so now we got us a game. So but yeah. just, I'm going to just go ahead and go keep ahead on telling y'all a little yeah. bit about these flashcards mm-hmm. for the culture. Yes. Because, listen, I, can they see the cards? Can they show? Is it after dark? This is after dark, right? I'm making sure now. We don't want to get no. kicked off somebody's platform. Girl, now. this is a pre record. They be fine. <laughs> yeah. Girl. Kicked off no platform. Okay. <laughs> You know, this this is an oldie but goodie. You know Which what I'm saying? Is this this is for the couples. Because Which one is that one? Spooning. Spooning, yeah. So that's just so sweet. And, oh, but these are like introductory. Like people would know like yeah. doggy style, but then they also don't know like how to arch your back or if you could put a pillow. So it also like kind of people. Ooh, the sideways 69. Sideways 69. Just the visual of it is nice. <laughs> Yeah, too much, too much information. Too much information back there. <laughs> Listen, okay. <laughs> the sideways, sideways you know what I mean? Like the illustrator did a really great job. Yeah, they did a really great job. But it's like one of those things where it's like people see me like, oh, is that's what it's called? I just mm. told people to turn to the side. Let me just stick it in. Kind yeah, of so you it's know like what that's mean? what it's called. Come sideways on, let's 69. do the G whiz. Now, granted, I don't think like why you in the midst of actually doing these things yeah. that you're gonna just call them out by their no. by their government names. <laughs> uh, but um, just knowing yeah. that there is formal terminology 
for these things yeah. and that you did the work behind it. And I mean, it's a great conversation mm -hmm. piece for mm -hmm. sure. If nothing else, it's for education and empowerment. I want women yeah. to be excited and empowered in the bedroom. They don't feel awkward or uncomfortable. And I say off the back that whatever, even the positions, you can alter it to your comfort level. Add a mm -hmm. pillow, arch your back, lay down. You can adjust it. You don't have to exactly do it. Trust me, he's going to figure out a way to get it in there regardless. He will. Because so. <laughs> this G Wiz is, mm -hmm. yeah, that probably is one of my favorites right there. <laughs> It's like, I'm playing because y'all know I'm a virgin. She's a virgin. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm back to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah. <clears throat> we say all of that to say that this is something that you guys really do want mm -hmm. to have just available. If you got you somebody, if you don't have you it somebody, it's a you great gift. Yeah. And it's just, if you don't, and people tell people that if you don't have anyone, you can still educate yourself to what you're doing when that time comes. So you can, yeah, you can keep, keep them on, them. okay? Huh? You want to get them and keep them. So yeah, so Joyride flashcards was birthed from the Joyride um, book because Joy herself says that that was her prized possession, Joyride flashcards. And she actually made what we call a pleasure kit in the book, but in the book doesn't define what's the pleasure kit. So I make pleasure kits and I've defined the pleasure kit. So one of the pleasure kit item is the game. And it's a game for couples. And I believe that all the stuff are tastefully done. They're not, they're not the slutty side. They're more the erotic side. So they, they tap into your fantasy world. Mm -hmm. So there's three sets of cards total in 69 because each, each deck has 23 cards. <laughs> you got ah, it. You see what Come I did? On, you I see what I did? Yeah. Yeah. So each deck has 23 cards total in 69. So 69 ways to have fun. And there are three sets of cards. The first deck is going to be to play so okay. the to play is going to be 23 do-it-yourself games that you can play gotcha. so is anything from strip tic-tac-toe to um bear to strip pink bear pong to um you know have i have you ever to you know strangers in the park or strangers in the mall in a, in a restaurant just anything you can think of so it's 23 cards for you to be able to play do-it-yourself games so you don't have to go out and buy like games for your play you can play it in there and then the next deck is going to be to ask. This is very similar. So I also made a sex journal. And this is similar to the sex journal. This engage in conversation. So it's going to be 23 questions, sexual questions to ask your partner. But it's not like the normal stuff. Like, oh, how many partners you've been with? Like, it's not that odd stuff. These are like just conversational questions. So it would be like, have you ever taken a nude selfie before? If, and, and sent it. What happened? Like, this is an engage in conversation. Not arguments, hopefully, but engage in conversation. Another question to have is like, What's your favorite position and why? You know, like, and it just allows couples to have those kind of un like. not awkward conversation, but hopefully it's empowering conversation. And of course, the last one is to play. And the to play aspect is a spinoff of the actual cards. And they're going to be um, 23 out of the card deck is 30. This one is 23. This one is slightly different because the card deck is going to be all African-American characters. And then... Believe it or not, white people, non non black people, was buying the deck. So I was like, "This is kind of cool to see like mm -hmm. non black people buy it." So the deck on the they nasty, yeah, that too. And they, they <laughs> look sex, sex now. Wait, okay. I'll, I'll come back around about about that part though. But yeah. um, so so the deck, this is multi race. So it has um, blacks, Hispanic, and Caucasian, and then they also have interracial couples mixed in there. Mm. So the pack that one has kind of like a little of everything okay, for everyone. I want to see them. I want to see yeah. them a little bit. So, and it's been fun okay. to kind of. She's okay. <laughs> okay, I see a little caramel. Yep. Light bright. Okay, with a little curly hair. <laughs> She's I see them. Uh huh. I see them. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> They in here, baby. They yes. are in here. So that's my Joyride 69 game. And it's a game for couples. It's actually located in about four stores right now. It's hard to get them into stores because you have to kind of explain it. Like it's not in a sex shop yet, but it, I, I try not to get it in a sex shop yet because I don't think people go in a sex shop to be like, I want to educate myself. They go in there to kind of get like, my, my line is very educational more than just like, you're just getting it off. So I try to put it into actual stores or bookstores that's going to, um, allow people to educate themselves or just feel like, oh, okay, this is something I can feel like I can work with. Or yeah. From. And I mean, it's the best of both worlds. Yes. Because while you are educating yourself, let's face it, they be getting nasty up on these cars. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Sex shops have like the novelty Ooh. section and those would probably go good in the novelty 
I will check. Not I'm trying conception. to get it onto Adam and Eve. I'm waiting for my trademark to come out because my Ooh. trademark it takes trademark takes about nine to ten months, unfortunately, to get trademarked. So I did it in March, so it should have been out by now. But they, they it's funny because my original logo was a blue logo, but then they it actually I didn't it realize like it. Canva. It looks like Canva. Yep, it looked like Canva. So I had to change mm. the logo to a purple logo. So we had to restart over. We had to resubmit and whatever. So we're just waiting for the trademark to come out. Once trademark is out. Then I will really like aggressively put it into other stories. But I wish someone told me it looked like Canva. It wasn't until <laughs> after someone's like, I thought you were Canva for a second. I'm like, oh my God, it does look like Canva. So, oh. but, um, it, and, and funny thing, I don't know how long Canva's been out, but I had mine out first, but that's fine. I'll like, I'll let Big Box Canva kind of have, have the logo. Like, I didn't trademark it. So I trademarked it now. Trademark. Yeah. 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 Um, so trademark your stuff if you can. It's actually not that expensive. It was less than a thousand dollars to trademark. You just got to just do it. Okay. Protect your name and stuff. See, and she she is going to get you hot and bothered, but she is going <laughs> to make you smarter too. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So we have had us a um, wonderful time talking mm -hmm. about what you have going on right now. But do you have some upcoming projects that you're working on? I do. I do, and I am working on. Um, so I am working on, I'm, I'm trying to be discreet because I've mentioned it before, but I haven't mentioned the authors, but I'm working on an anthology and it's going to be mm -hmm. an almanac series and it's going to be 12 authors. And one of the authors, including myself, is going to be on it. So I'm super excited, but it's 12 <laughs> authors that are coming together and we're going to write an almanac series. So it's going to be January all the way through December. Each author is going to get a month of their choice. I'm going to, she's going to kill me for doing that. I'm not going to say the author's name, but one author who has April, her character's name is April Jones. I have January, so my my version. Actually, I'm going to do an erotica. Um, here's a, a side spinoff. So um, Casey D, who is the um, hot wife that I was telling you about, when I'm picking her brain about certain things, um, she, <laughs> this is horrible. Um, she tells me that um, <laughs> it's, it's out, in my head. I'm trying to think of that um, black men are. Okay, so um, black cocks are, are 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 exciting for them. She's white. I was about to say cock. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> black, black cocks are exciting. Cock. Um, so it's actually a thing. <laughs> okay. To have a pleasure party with just black men and white women will come in to have sex with black men, and it's a thing. Like it's actually like it's a very popular thing. Mm -hmm. So the the, the January already. we right. knew that, but I didn't know it was like. Mm. A thing. Like a like you, pay, it's almost like a male prostitution without being prostitution because you pay to go to these pleasure parties, or it's actually called takeovers. Actually, so the concept of a takeover is they will take over the day event. So if you ever go to a hotel and there's a takeover, just go ahead and check out because gotcha. they're taking over the hotel. They may take over floors. They will take over like a room or uh, like a venue. They call it a takeover, and most of their takeovers are weekend takeover. So oh, it's wow. pretty much they're just swapping. A weekend takeover. So the takeover aspect is it would just be black men and women. They would just be like a black cock takeover, which means women, preferably non-black women, will come in and they will be a line. It's kind of like a, a sexual slavery kind of thing where it's like a line of black men and women just will get to have their way with black men. So well, J January's book will be that concept because I'm kind of a little bit fascinated with that concept, but then the there's new terms that will be also added in there. There's like a double barrel, which Ooh. I still don't understand how my, I can't process my mind to a double barrel. So it's pretty much two, it's two penises in one vagina. It's yeah. I'll or two penises in one mouth. Oh, child. Okay. This is, this is a lot. So this yeah. So lot. that's what I'm saying. So like, it's no, a whole, I, I, I can't, I, I'm sitting here like, <laughs> This well, who's getting lot. the pleasure in this? Like, I'm kind of, because that's tough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, I will be calling her. We'll probably go to dinner that day. And I'm like, okay, what you got? Tell me a little bit right. more. Tell um, me more. But, yeah. So she's she's super confident in her sexuality. And I, I put a, a clause in here to say, like, just because it's not your lifestyle, I don't want you people judging her lifestyle. Because she's very um, um, sad, not sadly, but she's very excited. She hit a thousand bodies. Um, like last month and she was very excited about it and she's married remember that she's married she's a hot wife i know yeah shock yeah okay and she's very excited about it. her husband is very proud of her 
Okay, okay. So <laughs> listen, I don't really think there is a way to avoid like thinking about this. And I know folks don't even be really saying it out loud. Yeah. But um, I mean, what her pH talking about? Like what she ain't never caught nothing. Nothing. I never asked that part. I never asked I that part. I, in my head, but though, I still feel still like... Off. Yeah, your pH got to be off, yeah. I just... Yeah. yeah. But I girl. think for me, it's not that. It's the, the support of the husband that's kind of mind-blowing to me. And, and, and <laughs> oh, you said God. it's hot? I don't want to be oh, the conversation. But he will help her get dressed. Now. He will give her a bath. He picks out her clothes. Like, it's a very... And then, and then so there is a, a reclaiming ceremony afterwards. Yeah. Girl, so it's like up. you're Not a thousand I flooded you out and you go ahead and like you think and then I'm a I'ma come bring you back in. So I'll bathe you and then I'll welcome you back and then I'll have sex with you. So it's a re I he's, he's reclaiming his property. It's a very fascinated and this is a true world and there's a lot of people in this world. It's very fascinating. And we're gonna get this story in. Remind us one more time. <laughs> my mind went so the it's other in, I it's the a, a to touch it. of it is in Code Red. Okay. Because KCD as the character is actually in okay. in Code Red. So you do experience it in Code Red. And and um Code Red got a one star review because it was and, and Joyride got a one star review because it was too much sex. So if, if it's okay. too much sex for you, this is not yeah, the, this is not fine. the serious you. If, you. if it's okay with that, thing. um, but no, um, so yeah, so it's touched in code red, and then the anthology that I'm working on, that's gonna be the concept of the black Cox kind of like like um party kind okay. of set up with white women, and that's coming. gonna be for that month of January. I'm gonna do that. January, but the um, anthology comes out on December 31st of this year because okay. it's gonna be a 2025 anthology. So we have 12 Ooh, authors. The authors are fire. I'm not going to lie. I'm so excited about the authors we have. I'm not going to say names, okay. but we have 12 amazing authors. One is, every, all of them are very well known. I even threw in a couple of ones that I just enjoyed their work and they all have 12 months of the year. So you're going to get 12 short stories, anywhere between five and 10,000 words. This is going to be a really, really exciting project. It's going to be a thick book. And all of get. them are erotica. No. no. So we have um, Four are erotica. Okay. Two are urban romance. One is a dark erotica, a dark fiction romance. Um, and I think one was a suspense. I can't remember, can't recall. And then I'm waiting okay. on two more. But the one I'm waiting on, I'm like, you can submit whatever you want to submit because I know it's going to be fire. It's like, don't even tell me what it is. Just, just go ahead and submit it when, you, when it comes <laughs> in. Um, so yeah, that's going to be dropping on December 31st. So I'm really excited about that. So I've kind of spent all my time on that. But this year, I've already dropped. Code Red came out April 1st. And then um, I did a kid's book, um, which was kind of mm -hmm. like weird to kind of be like, I'm erotica, but I do have a child and I'm just like, she's never allowed to read any of my books. So I made a kid's book for her and it's called Young Jamie, because again, everything's surrounded around the, the series. So the Jamie Reynolds Chronicles presents Young Jamie and it's Jamie before she became a character in the book. So it's Jamie mm -hmm. at like four years old. Because I mean, when you're doing all of this erotic stuff, you tend to be able to get pregnant. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so that could be, days. yeah, that Jamie. Um, but it's like little Jamie and uh, growing up in the streets of Brooklyn and just excited about life. Like her favorite pizza shop is Tony's Pizza in Bushwick. Her, you know, favorite thing to do is go to Central Park. So it's just like channeling my childhood of me growing up and the things that I enjoy doing. And like, I feel like, um, again, I'm a big reader and I'm still, I promote, we have a, I have a, Facebook page called Just Read because I'm promoting people to read. Reading and Sally is becoming a lost art. Like people are yeah. not reading the way they used to. So even still in reading in younger ages with the Just Read, with the Jamie Reynolds, Young Jamie series up until adulthood, I just want people to read. Reading is fun. I'm the girl at the bar who's reading a book and people, it's not a pickup line. People come to me all the time like, is this a pickup line? Are you really reading at the bar? I'm like, I am because I just wanted to be out the house and just have a good drink and mm -hmm. just read a good book. And, and so I'd be like, hold on, wait, let me just, wait, wait, let me finish this chapter. You're talking to me. Like, I'm, like, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I didn't impose you, you impose me. me. Back up. Um, but yeah, no, I think, um, I think there is, I can't even tell you, I think Amazon did a, 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 a I read a book, I read an article about five, six years ago that there's officially 1 million authors in the world based on Amazon's list. It was like 1 million authors in the world. Wow. So, we're out there. We're writing literature. I think black literature. I, I am a little biased to 
African-American literature, especially those who aren't as well known. And it's so, and they're just not well known because of this, the marketing side of things, because their books are just as amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I have to throw you out here because I read an anthology and uh, it was called The Cypher. And um, I was blown away and I literally slid into Miss Lady's DM and was like, sis, this book was fire. And again, some of the authors I've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. So please don't think because they're not well-known authors, their quality of work is not amazing. Like there's so many amazing authors out there. And again, I think like you just have to just put yourself out there and read. Sometimes books are free. Most of the time you can get a, a, a ebook. You ain't gonna lose ninety nine cents. You ain't gonna miss ninety nine cents. You're not gonna miss ninety nine cents. Two dollars. I've seen them maybe up to five dollars. You're not gonna miss it. But just to support who, the work that's out there and just have have a good read and then leave a review. Reviews are really important for us authors to know that even if it's a good, bad, or ugly, just to know like where people are. Thinking, I I I don't get as much reviews as I would like, and I don't really stress it because I'm always like selling on my website, selling in bookstores. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like I said, I did the erotica event. I think I sold like 150 books per day. Like I sold a ton of books and I'm just like that in itself is accomplishment, mm -hmm. not the reviews that like I may or may yeah. not get. So, but, but they yes, help. leave a review. Please yes, do. they do. Leave a review. Leave a review. <laughs> but I totally get it. You know, and I, when I think about what you just said, so many people, um, especially of a certain generation, um, they don't really understand why it's so important to that. They think in their head, like, I bought the book, I read the book, I like the book. Yeah. I ain't said nothing bad about the book, and that's enough, you mm -hmm. know? And so you may have 100 people who actually did reviews, and it's 5,000 people who actually didn't read your book. I think Amazon so, said you know. five, four or 5% of people actually leave reviews. So that can tell you, like, where your book stands. Yeah. But yeah. I love the fact that people slide in my DM all the time. I'm like, I like your book. I'm like, but you didn't leave a review. But thank you for sliding <laughs> my DM. I appreciate it all the time. Like, yes. oh, my God, I hated your character. I loved your character. And I'm like, but not one review. But I appreciate yeah. this. So, and you know what? Some people are like, they're like social. So they're not going to sit and type out a review. Yeah. But they'll go, you know, that hanging one out. One and tell their friends about it mm -hmm. or buy an extra copy and send it to somebody that yeah try you be having to just understand these generations of people honey. yeah they, but it, like i said it does i, I, I the appreciate the support i appreciate, appreciate the support I'm yeah sure. so you can go to my website author cassandra charles it's spelled with one s but i bought the domain name for two s's because i know how people are so it's called author cassandra charles and and most of the time i post where i'm going to be so i'm in your city check out my website or check out my social media pages author cassandra charles and you can see where i'm going to be and hang, come hang out with me hey. you can buy all my stuff i have a whole pleasure oh i didn't tell you about the pleasure kit girl wait a minute i, I was about the pleasure i, kit I didn't bring the pleasure kit but the pleasure kit will come with the sex journal the flashcards, the game it does come with a bedroom tickler it comes with a shower steamer, blindfold, love potion 69 oil, a finger massager, and your choice of a pleasure toy. So that can either be a remote control vibrator controlled by your partner, or it can be, this is an amazing vibrator. It does this little thing here. And it okay. does little yeah, so they can get any of those as well. And get your are, coins ready. <laughs> okay. Get your coins ready. Okay. Because that sounds quite pleasurable. It's fun. It's, fun. it's a pleasure kit. <laughs> and I want people to have fun and be empowered in the bedroom. I, again, America, society, we, sex is kind of like super like hunt, hidden and it's really bad. And I think if we just kind of like empower people to be happy and healthy and safe sexually, I think people wouldn't, it's not raunchy, it's not nasty, I don't know. I, I feel like as an erotica author now, my mindset around what America has done with sex is just like, it's just awkward now. Like, mm. you know, like if a woman has, again, a thousand is a little high, but you know, teachers don't, but like, you know, if a woman sleeps with three people, like, oh, she a hoe. And it's just like, it's like the stereotype, the double standard, it's really kind of aggravating, but. That's a whole nother conversation. I'll just let it be. Child, yes. Yeah. Well, listen, everybody. <clears throat> we have had a wonderful, Yay. wonderful, informative, <laughs> entertaining interview with our featured author for this evening. She has already told you where you can find her and where you can find all of her books and her games. And I want you guys to know where you can find me, too. Mm -hmm. I'm Tam telling tales. And I am on all social media platforms at that same name so make sure that you are checking me out that you share that you like that you subscribe to Tam telling tales anywhere that you can find me you guys so 
we are about to end, yes. but I always end my show with oh a little boy. saying. Ready. And I would absolutely love it if you would help me with it. Ready. So it's really easy. Yeah. You know it. Mm -hmm. You do. I do, but I don't. But I know okay, it's I'm like, read it. Okay, go ahead. Yo, go. Yo, okay, so it's I'll like, do the first part. I say, I'm Tim. Yep. I'm telling tales. And then you come right in and say, read a book. Read a book. I knew okay, it was read a book. Ready. Okay, ready. Go All ahead. right. You guys, I'm Tim. I'm telling tales. And read a book. Tim, 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 Tim